Hi, and welcome to our very first Construct 3 video tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be showing you how to make a very fun, yet very simple, platformer game. To get started, we're going to get you to open up Google Chrome, and in the URL bar, type in www.construct.net, or simply click on the link in the description of this video. Once you arrive at the Construct 3 homepage, click Try It Now, and then go down and click Launch Now in the bottom left of your screen. Once Construct 3 is finished loading, you'll arrive at the landing page. From here, you can load old projects, open example projects, or start a new project, which is what we're going to do today. So click on New Project at the top of your screen, and we're going to name our project Platformer. We're going to ensure that our viewport size is 854 by 480, and we're going to click Create. Now, the Construct 3 editor can be pretty complex, but we'll break it down piece by piece in every video. The first thing you'll need to know about the editor is how to navigate. So on your screen, you have two bars, one at the bottom of your screen and one at the right of your screen. Simply click and drag to maneuver around the screen. If you find yourself too zoomed in and cannot see the whole layout, simply hold the control key on your keyboard and scroll out with mouse wheel. To zoom in, simply hold control again and zoom in. Once you have a nice view of your layout, click on the gray area of your uh, project and we're gonna come to the top left and look at our layout properties. Now for a, a platformer, we want a really nice and long um, area. To do this, we're gonna change the layout size in our properties, and we're gonna change it to 3000 by 480. Awesome. Now this is looking pretty basic. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a space theme to our background. Maybe give it a nice black sky with some stars. To do that, we're gonna right click on our layout and insert new object. And we're going to use the search bar at the top right, and we're going to type in tiled. And that will get us the tiled background. Click on the tiled background, and in the name field, we're going to write BKG, which stands for background. Click insert, and then drop it anywhere in your canvas by clicking. This will open up your image editor. Now, this is pretty similar to the most common editors out there, like uh, Microsoft Paint. So to use this, we're simply gonna pick a color and then we're going to change how strong the color is. So if you come to the middle left of your screen, you'll find this little slider here. And if you slide it all the way to the left, you can select black. With black selected, we're gonna click on our bucket tool on the left here. Or if you can't find it, just press F on your keyboard. With that selected, simply click on your, um, click on your object and it'll paint it black. Now, we want some stars in our sky, so I'm then going to click on our paintbrush tool, which is located right here, or you can press B on your keyboard. We then have to remember to change our color, so I'm gonna take the slider again, slide it all the way to the right to get white, and then I'm just gonna drop in some stars. As simple as that. Cool. Once you're finished editing, Come to the top right hand side of your screen and click close. Now our background isn't quite where we're gonna where we want it to be. So to edit it, we're gonna click on it to make sure it's selected, and then we're gonna go to its properties on the top left hand side of your screen, and we're gonna change the size to the same size as our layout. So 3000 by 480. And as you can see, its positions are pretty, uh, pretty off. So we're going to change that by clicking on it. And we're going to change position to 0, 0. Cool. This is looking pretty awesome already. Now, before we move on to the next tutorial, we're going to make sure to save our work. So to save your work, simply go to the top left-hand side of your screen, click on Menu, Project, Save As, and save it to a local browser. And we're going to make sure we name 
our save and I'm going to leave my save as platformer. Now that we have a lovely space background, let's add a player into our game. To do this, we're going to get you to go into the description of this video, click on the Google Drive link, and it'll open up a nice big image of Astro. Simply right click on Astro, click Save Image As, and save to your downloads folder. Once you've done that, come back to this video and we'll add them in. To add a character in, we're going to right click and insert a new object. Scroll down until we find Sprite, and we're going to name our Sprite Astro. Click anywhere on your screen, and it'll open up the image editor. Now, instead of painting our character, we are going to load it from a file. To do that, we're going to come to the top right hand side of our screen, click open an image from a file, click on Astro, and click open. Now it's pretty zoomed in at the moment, so we're going to come to the top of our screen and click the zoom out tool. Awesome. Now there's only one property we need to edit for Astro Man, and that is their collision polygons. Now what these do is they tell the computer when one object is touching another. So to find that, we come to the middle left hand side of our screen, and we find this nice triangular icon. Now if you cannot see that icon, it's probably because animation frames is too high. If it is too high, simply drag your mouse over the top until, you, until it changes into this nice arrow. Click and drag down. Awesome. Now we need to give Astro some flat feet. So we're going to select the bottom point and drag it to the right, making sure that it's completely flat against the bottom. Then we're going to click our next point up here, drag it down and give Astro flat feet. Next, we're going to come to its backpack, click on its black, uh, backpack point, drag it in and drag it to its back. Now it looks more like the outline of a human. Once you're finished doing that, click close on the top right hand side. Now we have our main character in our game. But right now, it's looking pretty big. So we're going to make sure we have our Astro selected, and we're going to find its properties on the left hand side here. Now we want to change its size, and we're going to change its size to 50x 125. And that gives us a lot more room on the layout to work with. So now we have our player. Let's give our player something to stand on, some ground. So to add ground, we're going to right click and insert a new object. It's going to be a sprite, and we're going to call it ground. Then I'm going to select the bucket tool, or press F. And with that selected, I'm going to choose myself a nice color. So for my ground, I'm going to have a nice dark aqua blue thing, just like this. But you feel free to make your ground any color you want. Once you've finished editing your ground, click X at the top right. Now it's time to fill out our layout with some terrain. So I'm going to drag this piece of ground underneath our player, and then I'm going to reshape it using these little dots in the corner of your object. Just like this. Now, if you want to make more interesting patterns, you can right click on your ground, click copy, right click again, and click paste. And now with multiple ground objects, we can have more interesting terrain. Now our object of putting in our ground is to get it from one side to the other. That way our player can travel from one side to the other. So it's important to make sure you have ground going from one side of your layout all the way to the end, just like that. Now that we've created a nice world for our player, we can add some behaviors onto some of our objects. Now behaviors are pretty much shortcuts to code. An example of this would be, we can give our player the platform behavior and it will allow him to move around and jump without us having to write a single line of code. Now this is handy for quick prototyping of games. So the first behavior we're gonna add is the platform behavior. So we're gonna click on Astro, make sure he's selected, 
and we're going to come to the middle left of the screen and click on behaviors. We're going to go add new behavior and we're looking for the platform behavior. So it's right down the bottom left and we're going to go add. The next behavior we're going to add is called the solid behavior. Now the solid behavior lets anything that is platforming stand on top of it. So instead of falling through the object, it will stand on it like it's solid. So to do this, we click on any piece of our ground. We go behavior, add behavior, solid. Add. And now we're going to do our first test of the game. So to do this, we come to the top left of the screen and we're looking for the preview button up here. Click on that and we should be prompted and we click try again. And there we go. So to move our player, we go, you use the arrow keys. So left, left and right arrow to move and the up key to jump. So this is basically how the game will perform. Now, if you notice when our player goes along, the camera doesn't follow him. So you end up jumping out of the screen. So this is something we're gonna to have to fix. So we're gonna click on Astro again, and we're gonna give him yet another behavior. So add edit behaviors, add a new behavior, and we're gonna add the scroll to function. We're gonna try it again. A good thing to remember as programmers is you wanna test often. Every time you add a new piece of code, you wanna run your game and test it. So now, as you can see, the camera will now scroll to wherever the player is. So we can see a bit more of our level and how it works. Cool. Now might be a good time for you to run your game and test all of your obstacles to make sure that they're possible. Um, you never want to make your obstacles impossible to complete because this will completely frustrate your player and they'll probably quit your game. Okay, so if, if you noticed when we were playing, our Astro would only ever face one direction, and this is a big problem. We want him to face whatever direction we're moving him towards. So let's get started. We're going to right click on our screen and go add new object, and we're going to add the keyboard. So we want to take inputs from the keyboard and change our custom controls to listen to the keyboard instead. We're going to go over to event sheet now. So go, go to the top of your screen and you're looking for event sheet one. And we're going to start working with events. This is our first look at events. So events are probably the most difficult part of Construct 3. But Construct 3 has given us an example here to have a look at and try and break down what exactly is an event. So an event is made up of a condition and an action. An example of this could be, if I'm hungry, which is the condition, an action would be, I would eat. Or, if I'm thirsty, I will have a drink. Or, if, if my chair is empty, I will sit in it. The example they've given us is, if a bullet hits a monster, we destroy the monster and the bullet. So, we're going to create our very own event by right clicking and going add event. Where our event is, if they press a button on the keyboard, so we click keyboard, key is down, and we're gonna make this one A. And then click done. So if the person, if the player presses A, which will be move left, what are we gonna do? We're gonna go add action, astro, we're going to scroll down and we're looking for something called simulate control. So you can use the search function here and go simulate. And the control is left. So A is left. And we're also going to do something called flip the player. So we are going to make the player flip the other way to look left. So that is add action again under here. Astro. And then we're looking for something called set flipped. So I can't see it, so I'm just going to search for it. Sorry, it's called mirrored. So M-I-R-R, -R, and we should get it there, set mirrored. Next, and we're going to set it to mirrored. Okay, we're going to make another condition now, but this time it's going to be to move right. So add event, keyboard, 
key is down and we're going to choose D and go done. Now we're going to add action Astro and we're going to simulate control again and but this time instead of going left we're going to go right and we're going to add action again Astro under appearance and we're going to go set mirrored not mirrored Okay, now that we've done that, let's test it out. So we're going to run our program, try again, and we're going to use D and A to move. So D, A, and as you notice, whichever way he's moving is the way he's going to face, and that's exactly what we want to happen. Okay, cool. Now let's repeat this process yet again, but this time for the jump function. So I like to use spacebar for jump. Some people like to use W, so I'll let you choose that. I'm going to go with spacebar for, oh, sorry, I'm going to go with W for my one. So, back in, right click, add event, and remember it's keyboard, key is down, click to choose, and we're going to go W, and done. Going to go add action on the end, astro, and again, it's just simulate control, and jump. And that's all we need to do. And now we've created a custom set of movement for our player. So we don't have to rely on what they want us to do. Awesome. So with that in mind, we are going to turn off the default controls for the game. So if we were still to use the arrow keys, they would not flip. So what we need to do is we need to go back to layout one. We need to click on our astro. We need to scroll down and we're looking under the behaviors platform and we've got to change one control which is default controls and we're going to click untick. So now that default controls are unticked, they have to move using WASD with, and not arrow keys anymore. So as you probably noticed with our game so far, it's pretty easy. All we're doing is jumping gaps and that's it. So for this video, we're going to make another element of difficulty. We're going to add spikes to the game. So this alien planet has spikes, and if the player touches those spikes, the player is going to die and the level is going to reset. So let's get into it. Our first action is we're going to right click and go insert new object. We're going to find sprite, and we're going to change the name to spike. Insert, I'm going to click. Okay, so this time we're going to draw a triangle and change its polygon to match. So first we want to choose the color of our spike. So I'm going to have red spikes. Some nice dark red spikes. And to draw it, I'm going to use the line tool. So you can either click the line tool here or press L. And we'll start drawing. So the technique I use for drawing triangles is I come down to the bottom left. I click in the corner. And you want to hold and drag all the way to the middle of the top, just like that. And you want to repeat this process on the other side and make sure that they link up in the middle. So you want no white space in between them. That way when we get our bucket tool, which is F, and click in the middle of it, bang, we've got our triangle. Now, if you don't like these annoying white lines, you can get the line tool again and just click at the bottom and fill those white spaces up. Cool. Now we've got to remember to always change our collision polygons. That way if the player hits this white empty space, they don't get treated as hitting the spike. So we're going to drag our collision over the top and it's the same with this side. Just like that. Now we have a nice triangle polygon. I'm going to close. And this spike's probably a bit too big. So we're just going to hold shift and drag it in. And now we have some nice small spikes. So again, you can click and either go copy paste or you can right click, go copy and then right click paste. And we just wanna add these spikes in all around our level where we think we wanna add some more difficulty. And it'll just make our game a little bit harder and a little bit more interactive for the player. Now that the spikes are there, we want to do some code to make them actually do something. 
So we're going to do our first collision based event. So we're going to go back to our event sheet one, which is at the top here. And we're going to right click add event. And it's going to be if Astro on collision with another object. So on collision with another object. And you can click to choose the object here and it's going to be spike. So now the condition is if the astronaut touches the spike, what are we going to do? We're going to go system, restart layout. So if the player touches the spike, we're going to restart the level so they have to start again. So let's give this a try. So first I'm going to jump that one. And what happens if I touch the spike? Oh, I get the level starts again. Perfect. That's exactly what we want. So now this will give our level a bit more difficulty. While we're at it, as you saw, when I fell through the level, I didn't die. And now that's a problem. So we're going to quickly clean that up right now. So it's going to be, we're going to make sure we're in our event sheet again. We're going to right click, add event, astro, and we're looking for is outside layout. So we're just going to type outside in our search bar and that'll create, give us um, is outside layout. So if Astro is outside the layout, add action, system, and then we're looking for restart layout again. Awesome, let's give that a try as well. Awesome, that works just how, just as intended. Now that we've got some spikes for added difficulty, it's a, the game's a bit better, but it still feels too static for me. So we're going to add a pretty common feature in a platformer, which is like some sort of moving platform that helps you move from one side to the other. So to implement this, we're going to need a big space. I'm going to put my big space at the end. So all of this, I'm going to reduce and make a huge gap that the player could not possibly jump over. And I'm going to put a platform in the middle that's going to go side to side. So the player can jump on here and then jump off on the other side. Cool. So to do that, I'm going to right click, insert new object. And it's going to be a sprite and I'm going to name it platform. So I'm going to make my platform a slightly different color from the planet. That way you can distinguish what moves and what doesn't move. So again, all I did was um, click your, click whatever color you want in your color palette. Make sure you have your full tool selected and then just click in the square. You guys should know this dri um, drill by now. And then we're just going to close it up. So now that I have my platform, I'm going to put it in the middle of the gap that I've created. And then I'm just going to reduce its size. So we're going to do this all without using a single line of code. So to do this, we're going to just, I might actually make this color a bit lighter. It's a bit dark. There we go. It's a bit more obvious now. We're going to click on it and go to behaviors. Add new behavior. And we're going to add solid. And we're also going to add another behavior called sign. So S-I-N-E sign. Add. So what the sign behavior does is it makes it move from side to side or up and down. However, whatever you set it to. So we're going to make sure that the properties for the sign are horizontal sign a magnitude, oh, sorry, a period of six. So that's how long it takes to do a full sign movement, six seconds. We're going to make the magnitude or 500. And then we're just going to play. Now I want you to navigate your level all the way up until you get to where you put your box and you're going to test it. So as I'm looking at it now, it's probably its magnitude is too high because it comes into the platforms. So we're just gonna we're just gonna reduce that maybe to 350. And it's up to you to I don't know how big your gap is, so it's up to you to decide what your magnitude and period is. But just play with those numbers until you get something you like and get good at using that. Just with that simple addition, your game becomes a whole lot more dynamic and fun. And you can do a lot of things with these. You can use them as blockers to block as you jump and knock you into a cliff or I mean off the edge of the screen there's a lot of ways you can use it 
uh, maybe an elevator to go to a new level. Who knows? It's up to you guys. So our level looks pretty complete now, except there's no way for us to end the game. So we're going to very quickly create a new object. So right click, insert new object. It's going to be a sprite and we're going to name it um, portal. So this will be our portal that transfers us to the next level. I'm going to choose our color. So I'm going to make a nice purple portal. I'm going to use the ellipse tool, which is T. I'm just going to click in the middle of the screen while holding shift. And this will make sure it's a perfect circle. Just like this. And then I'm going to, I might get a darker shade of purple. And I'm going to make a second layer inside. Just to give it like a nice effect, you know. And then I'm going to edit its collision polygons. Just to be a bit tidier. That way they actually have to get into the middle of the portal, not just touch the side. Awesome. I'm going to put my portal at the end, maybe shrink it a bit. And now we're going to do another set of code for it. So it's just going to be a simple on collision event. So we're going to go to our event sheet. Right click, add event. Astro. On collision with another object. And we're going to choose the object portal. So if the player touches the portal, what do we want to happen? We want to go to the next layer or the next level. So that's just system. And then go to next previous layout. So we want next layout, done. Now that we've finished coding our portal, we can move on to making a new level. So right now the code says go to next layout, but we only have one layout. So I'm gonna show you how to make new levels so you can keep going and build your own custom levels. So the first thing we're gonna do is click on layout in the top, layout one, sorry, in the top right of your screen. We're gonna right click on it and go rename. And rename that to level one. So this is your first layout. We're gonna create our second layout now. So you just click on the layouts folder in the top right again, right click and go add layout. Now we, we get a dialogue here. Do we wanna add another event sheet? And we're gonna click add layout only. So we're gonna rename the second layout to level two. And with level two selected, we are going to come across to the left side. And if you see the name of the layout is level two, but there's no event sheet. So we're gonna click the drop down and add event sheet one as its event sheet. So with that selected, it means that all the code we have previously done for level one exists for level two as well. Now there's one more bit of clean that we need to do for ourselves. And that is we need to come to our right side of our screen under event sheets. And we're gonna change this event sheet one to game event because it's not just for event sheet one, it's for every event sheet that's part of our levels. Cool. And now we're going to go back to the start of our tutorials where we customized and made our levels look good. So first we are going to change the layout size. I'm not sure if you guys remember, but we need to change it to 3000 by 480. But this is up to you. If you want a longer or shorter level, feel free to change these numbers and experiment. The next thing we need to do is we need to get the background objects in. So we're just gonna click in our right hand side project bar. We're gonna click BKG and we're just gonna drag it in. Now it's off center again, so we're gonna do what we did last time. We're gonna click on it, come up to its position on the left hand side and go zero comma zero, done. We're gonna drag in Astro from our right hand bar and we're gonna drag in ground from our right hand bar. Now that that's all done, we're gonna come back to level one and we're gonna test our code. So you got, I want you to run through the level and finish it. And I want you to see whether you get to the next layout, which is level two. So theoretically, when you touch this portal, you should teleport to level two. So that brings us to the end of our tutorials for this session. You've got two choices from here on out. You can either do extra for experts, which is where we show you how to create a laser gun 
and aliens and you have to shoot the aliens. So you can add that to your levels. Or you can go off and create your own custom level 2, level 3, level 4. And show us how creative you can get with what we've already showed you. The spikes, the moving platforms, the portals. Don't be afraid to really get in there and test everything you can. Don't be afraid of failing. And show us what you got at the end of this lesson. Welcome to our first section of Extra Foot Experts. So this video is for anyone who thought, okay, that was easy, I'm caught up, I'm ahead, I want to learn something else. So I'm going to teach you in this segment how to fire a laser gun and have aliens move around the screen, and if you hit the aliens, they die. So the first thing we're going to do is create a laser object. So by now you should be, know how to create objects, so just right-click Insert. Looking for a sprite. I'm going to name it laser. I'm going to choose a nice red color for my laser because that's pretty dangerous. I'm going to use the full tool, which is F, and just make a nice uh, red block. Then we're going to drag it down to his hand, and we're going to resize it to just try and make it the size that we want our laser to be. So that looks pretty appropriate for the size of the, the player. I'm going to drag it off screen. Once it's off screen, we're going to start editing its behaviors. So Construct 3 has a lot of nifty behaviors that we can use for lasers. So if we just click on it and go behaviors, add a new behavior, and we're looking for destroy outside layout. So anytime a laser would leave the screen, we want to remove it so the computer's not constantly using up memory. We want to add a new behavior on top of that, and this one's going to be called bullet. So now that we have our laser, we want to set up our player's gun so the, the laser knows where it's spawning. To do this, we just click on our Astro character and we're gonna double click to open up his editor. Now we're gonna edit something called an origin point. An origin point is basically just somewhere where other things can spawn from. So we're gonna spawn, give it an extra origin point to fire its laser from. So to do that, we click on edit the image points, which is on the middle left of your screen. And you're going to right click in its image points and go add new image point. And you're going to right click and rename it to gun. Once you have gun selected up here, you're going to click in the middle of his hand. So this will be where the laser spawns. And all we do is exit out of this. Cool. Now that we've got all that set up, we're gonna do the code for the laser. So we're gonna go into game event, and we're gonna add an event. So right click, add event, keyboard, on key pressed, and we're gonna choose the space bar. So press space bar, and then go okay, and done. So when the keyboard space bar is pressed, we're gonna add action, I'm going to click Astro, and we're going to go spawn another object. So spawn another object. And we're going to spawn laser off the player. And it's going to be off image point 1. So image point 1 is our gun. Press done. And let's try it out. So press, this, press the preview button. Uh, so this... This has happened because we haven't set the event sheet to work in level 2 yet. So we've got to come back to our level 2 layout. And at the top left you'll see the name of the event layout. And you'll see the event sheet. And right now it's got none selected. You want to click and click event sheet, game event. This means that the level 2 will use the event sheet, um, game event. So now we try and play it again. So just press preview again. And now you should be able to walk around and press spacebar to shoot. So you now have a laser gun. But as you notice, when you're mirrored, or when you're facing the wrong way, it still shoots um, to the right side. So we're going to have to change that in the next video. Alright, let's do some cleanup on our laser. Right now it only fires to the right side, and that's just not good enough. So we're going to go back into our game event sheet and we are going to use a property called mirrored. 
So at the start, when we first configured our movement, we used a method called mirrored. So whenever we move to the left, we mirrored, and whenever we move to the right, we not mirrored. So we're gonna use that code again to decide which way we are going to fire our laser. So we're gonna do something called nested events. So we're gonna click on keyboard on key pressed and make sure that the whole row is highlighted yellow. Then you're gonna right click and go add sub event. So I'll do that again, click on it, make sure it's all yellow, right click, add sub event. And it's going to be astro is mirrored. So it's asking you, is Astro mirrored or is he not? So we're gonna drag this piece of code onto our next statement. So now it will only fire if Astro is mirrored. So if Astro is mirrored, we want it to fire to the right, um, to the left hand side, sorry. So we're going to add another action and we're gonna go laser set angle 180 degrees. So it's gonna go the opposite direction. The next thing we're gonna do is click on this code here, make sure it's all highlighted, and we're gonna press X. This will give us an else statement. So basically what this is saying is if he's mirrored, fire it left, else fire it right. So we're gonna copy this code here. So if you click on Astro Spawn Laser, only this line of code should be highlighted. And we're gonna go Control C, we're gonna click on our else statement and we're gonna go control V. And we're gonna play, let's test it out. So this is him not mirrored, so it should fire straight. And when he moves to the left, he's mirrored and it should fire that way. Perfect. On the next video, we'll show you how to add an alien and then we'll shoot the alien and kill the alien. Now that we have a working laser gun, let's work on some aliens to fight. So these should be pretty familiar to us as we're gonna use the same behaviors that we use for our moving platform. So we're just gonna click right click, insert new object. Want a sprite and it's gonna be called alien. Um, I'm gonna make my alien green. So again with the fill tool and it's just gonna be a green box. Actually, let's, let's make it a bit more exciting. I'm gonna make it Green circle. Another green circle here. So that's what my alien will look like. You guys can get pretty creative on what your aliens look like, but this is what mine looks like. So make sure you if you do make your own custom one, make sure you set the polygons to mostly match up with it, as much as you can with how the alien actually looks. Now that we've got our alien, I'm gonna might reduce its size just a bit. Now you wanna make sure that it's at least the height of the gun. That way the lasers don't go over the top of it and we'll actually hit it. Cool. Now that we've got one, I'm gonna copy and paste it so you have two aliens. Awesome. Now there's a few things we need to add. The first of all, the behaviors for the aliens. So we're gonna click on the alien again, go into behaviors, add new behavior, and we're gonna give these aliens the sign behavior. This will make them move backwards and forwards, just like the platform. And it's gonna move 200 back and forward. Now, if you notice, when I change one property of one, it doesn't change the other's property. So I'm gonna to to take this alien 200 as well. So now they've both got sign movement of 200. Let's give them some health. So when we shoot them with our laser gun, we wanna reduce their health by 50. So we wanna make sure that they have about 100 health each. So to do this, we click on one of our aliens and go instance variables, add new instance variable, and we're gonna call this health. I'm going to change this to 100. So if we click on them, they both should have 100 now. Now, instance variables will take a while to get your head around. 
all of it is is it, it holds the property of an object like its health for each object so both of these alien objects have the instance variable health but they are unique when the game starts to run for example if i shoot one alien i will only reduce its health if i shoot the other alien i will only reduce its health so the the instance variables work independently in the game but we'll cover more on that later so right now we're going to go back to our game event sheet and we're going to do some coding so the first thing we want to do is do our collision events they're simple and easy so we should have two collision events when the laser hits the alien we want the alien to lose health and the laser to disappear and when the alien hits the player we want the player to die and we want to restart the level so let's do that right click add event when the alien is on collision with player or astro we want to add action system and restart layout then we want to add another event and this is when the laser is on collision with another object alien now this will be quite complex we want to add action onto this and we want to go alien subtract from so subtract from and we want to subtract 50 points of value from health and then we want to add another action underneath which destroys the laser that we fired good once we've got that done we now have to destroy the alien if it runs out of health so again right click add event alien and we're going to do something called compare instance variable so when its health is equal less than or equal to zero so it's run out of health we simply want to go alien destroy and if i'm correct this all should work properly the aliens will move and we can shoot them and if they take if they get hit twice they should die and if they get once hit once they should live so it's got our health now let's see if our collision works yep works perfectly so now you guys know how to do all the stuff you can shoot lasers and you can have enemies that move around your screen so now i want you to go away and flesh out this level two as much as you can get creative see what you can come up with